So I think it's fair to say that AI has undoubtedly become a buzzword over the last few months. With the likes of Midjourney and ChatGPT, I can't browse LinkedIn or Twitter for more than five minutes without seeing someone say, this is how you can make X amount of money with these tools. And I think the general public has this perception of AI just being about generative content, being able to make something with a prompt. But of course, AI goes far beyond stuff like Midjourney. AI is used in medical care, autonomous vehicles, and of course, even software. Now, DaVinci Resolve has a number of AI and machine learning tools and today we're gonna to run over a few recent additions. Now again, these are tools which are gonna be used to help better your workflow, to, to help take away the tedious tasks. It's not so much one click and you've got a video, it's more so, oh well, I don't have to rotoscope for three hours thanks to the machine learning algorithm from DaVinci's neural engine. So before we jump into it, please give us a subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. And let's have a look at what some of these new tools are. Okay, so as of the 18.1 Resolve update, the Fusion tab now has access to the machine learning Magic Mask tool. As it's using Resolve's neural engine, it's a very powerful tool, which eliminates the need for intricate keying and rotoscoping. So let's get started just to see how useful this is. So first, let's jump over back onto the Fusion page. We're gonna say that this is for an advert, um, a, a garden center or perhaps like a nature reserve, um, and it's just reopened. And what I wanna do is add text to the background, but have this guy stand in front of the text. So we need to separate him from the background. So all we're gonna do is make sure media in one is selected and hit shift space to bring up the tool selection or alternatively you could just go over to the effects to find the magic mask but i'll just do the shift space type in magic mask and add now over in the inspector we have the primary controls for the magic mask now there's going to be a cohesive theme throughout this video over the four tips that we look upon and it's that the parameters there's very little of them because Resolve in itself with the AI assistance is doing a lot of the heavy lifting, resulting in little input from the editor, the visual effects artist or um, the color grader. So all I'm gonna do, make sure that the stroke mode is selected to add and I'm just gonna draw a line over the guy. Instantly, like actually, do you know what? Let's just bring that to the viewer. Have we? That's just like a straight up direct pull, isn't it? That's pretty much perfect. I think what we might do instead, let's get him so his head's looking like this, because one thing that you do want to do is have your footage where the majority of the um, elements of the object that you're masking is in focus or in view. So for example, over here at the beginning of this mask, um, his right ear is not in shot. So if I go ahead a few frames by here, there we go. So again, I'm just gonna do like a similar stroke. Boom. Okay, so now we've got those two elements added. We're gonna go down into the parameters here. I'm gonna change it to better, just so we get like in a better mask. And I, if I just zoom in here, in fact, if I go to faster, we can see the difference around the man's ears. There's a much better pull on that. So now, in regards to the mat itself, um, over here we have the different parameters that you would use in order to generate a better mask. So I would maybe look to increase, there we go. We don't want to chop off his ear too much. I'm going to go to blur, maybe bring that down again. There we go, that's great. Bring that back into fit. Um, and now essentially all we would do is hit tracking and depending on where you are would dictate into which arrow you select so of course i move this a few frames ahead and as a result we're going to click uh, track forward then reverse now this is a very gpu intensive operation the magic mask in, in fact if there's any ai operation in resolve um, and you're using footage with a lot of data such as some red files or something like that um, go make yourself a cup of coffee, bust out Netflix on the PlayStation. Uh, it's going to take a few minutes and of course even longer depending on um, the length of your clip. Okay, so I don't know if you've noticed the uh, amount of time on the clock, but that did take a few minutes to finally uh, process. 
But now what we have is this perfect mask. Again, in this shot, the left ear, the right ear, sorry, is not in view. And then it pops into view and his left one goes out of view. And it's all great. You know, there's, there was no need to meticulously rotoscope around his ears or perhaps the side of his face where it falls out of view. Resolve knows. Uh, the machine learning algorithm knows that this is the area that needs to remain present. By here now, I'm just going to add some text. Add, okay, and the text is gonna be garden center now open. Smiley face because it's super professional to do those. Put that under and you know we can see it's perfectly been masked just around him and if i go to the edit page where i've got the uh, background plate underneath that's great that is absolutely fantastic obviously the camera hit is is handheld so we would now have to track the text with the uh, camera movement but that is not a tutorial on ai software within uh, resolve so we will not be looking at that but you know what just a single brush stroke has been able to generate that mask. Insanity. Now again, if I just jump back up to the magic mask, let's say if there was a plan, or maybe, you know, maybe we don't even want that blue jumper in there uh, for whatever reason. Just draw this line around this area. And boom. You know, we've subtracted the blue jumper from his attire. This tool is a game changer in Fusion, so thank you for including it. Okay, so another new feature added in the 18.1 update is the depth map, and you can find this on the color page. And this uses AI to produce depth data from video footage. By examining the perceived distance of an object within a video clip, the depth map feature generates an alpha channel which can be used to isolate specific depth areas for further image manipulation. So then we can start adding tilt shift or selective focus, 3D compositing, whatever it may be, just within a specific area. For example, I have this video clip. It's the same man as our uh, previous clip, same advert, same concept, producing uh, a commercial for a garden center. He's sitting on a tree stump. It's a nice wide shot. However, if I zoom in, he's, he's quite out of focus. He's, he's not quite out of focus. He's softly out of focus. It's not great but it's a wide shot, it might be a little bit permissible, but if you're a perfectionist, this just won't do. Now, a few years ago, I did produce a tutorial on my personal channel on how to fix soft focus in DaVinci Resolve, and that initial method involved creating a power window around the person's eyes, because that's generally where we're drawn to um, when we're looking at someone. He's too far away to do it around his eyes, so maybe just around his body. Go into the tracking tab, track this, and then, go into the blur and sharpen and just increase in the sharpening amount by a significant amount, or just by a touch, I should say. Now, if I turn that node on and off, we can see there's, a, there's, there's quite a little bit more clarity to the guy. However, as we know, that's not necessarily how lenses work. And that fix is just a, you know, a, a band-aid, a plaster over um, something that cannot really be fixed. But as we know, with the way that lenses work, it's not as if just that one person should be in focus. It's that entire area found within the focal plane of wherever the focus on your lens is resting. So in our example, all of this area, the man, the tree stump, a little bit behind, a little bit in front, that should be in focus, not just his eyes or his face. With the depth map, we can do stuff like that. So we're gonna to go to the effects page. Oops, it's already open. Add that to our clip and instantly the AI has generated some depth data to our image. The dark area is the background. The white bright area is gonna be the foreground with the middle gray in the middle ground. What we wanna do is isolate that middle area and we can do this with the parameters over on the right. Now there's no magic setting that I can recommend to you guys. It's gonna be entirely based on your video clip. But what I'm gonna do here is just decrease the far limit, just a touch. It is a very um, sporadic tool where if you just knock it too far, it's gonna to go too um, wild. So then I'm gonna isolate it by, there we go. So we've got a little bit of that background. He's, he's primarily covered, but too much of the foreground here. So I'm gonna to go to the near limit, bring that forward 
ever so much. And then with the target depth, there we go. Okay, then what I would probably do is go to the post processing. I'm gonna blur this a tiny bit, touch. And then I'm probably gonna be quite susceptible to contracting that. Okay, now on the same node, I'm just gonna go back to the sharpening uh, tool and knock that down a touch. But we can see that the tree stump, that comes into focus too. We've got this entire area in the grass that's been sharpened. Again, I'm gonna knock it off, knock it on. Even we can see the bark on the floor, that too has been picked up in more clarity because that all falls within the focal range. So obviously we could still make the mask and, um, and sharpen it that way. But when you've got a moving shot where, you know, I'm quite lucky in this instance, it's a handheld shot and the man is stationary. But when you're moving, um, it's not gonna be ideal. But anyway, this is just one implementation for the depth map and um, from uh, the AI that Resolve is using in order to generate the depth data, um, it's vastly faster and more efficient than drawing power windows and tracking and doing all that stuff. No tracking is needed. All of that data is what Resolve is finding for us um, and really speeds up the workflow for these type of situations. Okay, so another recent feature that has been added into DaVinci Resolve, which is AI based, is the object mask tracking. Uh, this really eliminates the need for tedious rotoscoping. Um, so let's have a look at this. This is on the color page. So I'm gonna jump over to here. I'm gonna create a node before this chain. Let me close this area down. A few years ago when the Magic Mask tool was added into DaVinci Resolve, it was done so where it was primarily for the color correction of humans. So it was for a person, as we could just add some strokes to the entirety of someone here. Uh, and then we also have the Features tab, which then we can choose different areas of their body, such as arms, exposed skin. Draw that up there, and it'll just qualify the arm and then we can go into the parameters and adjust where applicable. However, now we have object mask tracking, which does the same, but on objects. And it's so useful for creating some really cool effects without the need of jumping over to the Fusion tab or jumping over to After Effects, where typically you're gonna be manually rotoscoping these, uh, these things. Here I'm holding a camera and all I want to do is mask that camera so we can add like a cool effect, maybe make it look as if it's, uh, I'm holding like a relic from, from the 90s or something. So with the magic mask, obviously we were just on the person. We're now gonna switch over to the object and it's ex the exact same process, okay? So we're just gonna add some strokes until what we're looking at is primarily just the camera. I'm gonna add a subtraction over here. Okay, that looks pretty fine. So I'm just gonna track that forward. Let's look at the results. So one of the issues I can already see is one, the front of the lens has vanished. So I'm gonna add a, another stroke on that lens. And additionally, the top of the camera has gone and I do not like that finger. So, you know, as you can see, these strokes are not the fine work of art at all. Um, obviously, if you are familiar with rotoscoping in After Effects, depending on, on, on how old you are, um, but it would be, we'd be meticulously using the pen tool around the fine areas of the image. Here, I'm just drawing um, lines as if I'm a four-year-old boy again. So I'm gonna retract this. Okay, that's really solid. However, one thing I do find is the mask quality is not too great. You know, we've got a lot of jagged lines, maybe some spill out on the side of the lens. So then we just use the parameters over here. So I would probably look to clean the blacks, bump this up a tiny bit. Oh, do you know that's pretty much fine as it is. Increase the blur radius a tiny bit so the uh, mask is a lot smoother and I'm probably gonna denoise it. So that to me is fine. You know, for, for this tutorial, I'd, I would more than likely spend uh, maybe an extra half an hour on trying to really pull this. But as you can see, in a matter of what, 30 seconds, uh, we've just isolated this entire camera. It's missing my thumb. It's missing my other finger on the trigger button. 
And yeah, that is that is fantastic. So what I would love to do now, ah, here we go, analog damage. So I'm gonna add this onto this. Obviously that's not where we want. Um, but I'm gonna go to 1990s. Now we've got like this cool sort of TV texture on the camera just by itself. That's sick. It's super clean. There's no bleed to that. The fingers are fine. You know, we, we've now got this VHS style camera for a 30 second object mask, which, which is just insane. I'd be spending um, all night on After Effects doing something like this. Thanks to uh, Resolve's Neural Engine, you know, it's, it's, it's a few moments. And one of the latest and most impressive additions to DaVinci Resolve is the Voice Isolator, which uses AI to negate unwanted background noise. I don't know how many times we've been on a shoot to see the sound operator say stop, there's a plane, there's a tractor, there's a hum in the background, and we have to wait until these issues are remedied. No longer is that the case. The Voice Isolation tool provides unparalleled noise removal from your typical stock noise removal plugins, that come with your NLE and DAW. Here I have a clip from a project that I worked on in 2021. It was a period piece for an actress's showreel. Now we were filming in an isolated location, but we were next to a pond that we couldn't switch off. The birds were chirping because it was the beginning of spring. And overall, it's slightly too noisy. Flora, that boy was not following you out of intrigue. He simply wanted to bring to your attention that your outer skirt was atop your bodice following your encounter with the chef's son? Here, I'm just gonna knock on the voice isolation. Flora, that boy was not following you out of intrigue. He simply wanted to bring to your attention that your outer skirt was atop your bodice following your encounter with the chef's son. Wow, what a difference. And we can bring out this pop-up to reduce the processing amount, but overall, with some messing around on the EQ, we can get this to a point where we're gonna have to start adding in the sound of birds in order to make it sound realistic. This is an absolute game changer for those pesky aeroplanes, the lawnmowers, anything that would usually be a detriment to your shoot. Okay, so that concludes this video. Now, these aren't just the only AI tools and it's more than likely with um, NVIDIA and Blackmagic's partnership that we'll be seeing more AI tools be added into the software in the coming months or if not the coming years. And I'm really excited because this AI is not about generating content at a finger's click. It's about aiding the editor and improving the workflow and taking away the tedious tasks um, that once would put me off a project all together. So I've been Lewis with Fidebo. Please remember to subscribe, leave us a comment, tell us what you think and what else you're looking for uh, from the guys in the channel. Catch you next time.